Hi, Thomas, and welcome to Queer Magic. Fantastic to have you on the show, um, which is uh, um, obviously great because you have written a book called Queer Magic, which uh, I have not yet got around to reading, but uh, I definitely will. Um, also, a book on Santa Muerte and um, a book on morbid magic, which looks very interesting and uh, also a fascinating career in international diplomacy and um, other exciting things. So um, very, very pleased and proud to have you on the show. Fantastic. No, I'm excited. I, I, I love these and I love how you you know my backstory. I, that's, it's always so strange when you go on these shows and it's like, oh, like everyone knows about it. And at the time, you never think it's gonna like amount to anything. You're just living in the moment and doing it. And then it becomes your bio. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, pretty impressive. So kudos to you. Um, so yeah, tell us uh, a bit about your um, involvement with um, magic and paganism and the like. Sure. Uh, um, how long have you been <coughs> on the magical path? I would say all my life, but that's, I think that's a cop out answer. So uh, <laughs> A better answer would be that it's, you know, I although I look straight out of Dublin, um, I'm actually half Mexican, half Irish. So I've been very much raised in the Catholic Church, going to Catholic school all my life. And Catholic Catholicism is the very most mystical branch of Christianity. I mean, you have all these saints you can pray to who have dominions of magical powers. So it's always been a bit magical. But um, I didn't really start getting onto the path, the path until college when um, I found this spiritual sensei that I met on the secret, the book in the film series, The Secret, their Facebook fan page. Uh, yeah, I know I just found The Secret and it was like, ah, this revelation in my life. And um, it works, don't knock it, but it, yeah. And I got involved in the community and I met my spiritual sensei who I still look up to today. Shout out to B. Dave Walters doing big things, but he just introduced me to little this company called Llewellyn that I had no idea was full of all these magical books and here read this by Christopher Penzak here read this about hermeticism and I tried it out and I'm super skeptical I don't take anything anyone tells me at face value but I started trying some of the stuff that I read in the books and it started working and I thought okay this is something I need to get into and then I just found my own magical path by really being fascinated because I've always been fascinated by um, death and the macabre. I was one of those kids that grew up watching the live action Adams Family and all the Tim Burton movies when he was in his creative peak. So that that for, that formed my life. <laughs> so I was uh, always into that. I've got a huge crush on Morticia Adams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the day I knew I was an adult was when I watched the, those films and I empathized and saw that Morticia was the real badass more than Wednesday Adams, And I knew I am now an adult. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, yeah. I super got, I had these um, sketchy friends here in Los Angeles who shall not be named. But um, I was I was living in um, Reno for a while and I came back and one of my friends like to likes to cruise around downtown in East Los Angeles at night for certain reasons. And he says, hey, Tomas, you have him back in LA, right? You like that dark stuff. You like that death stuff, right? I'm like, yeah, where is this going? And he said, well, sometimes, you know, when I'm, when I'm working and I'm, I'm cruising around at night downtown, there's these, there's these strip malls and inside there's a giant grim reaper with candles and it's like midnight, man. And I don't know what they're doing, but they're praying to this death thing. I think you'd be into that. <laughs> you, want, you, want to, you want to go on a cruise with me and check it out? I was like, absolutely, because that's how you know your best friends. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and I found the Santa Muerte temple that I didn't know was Santa Muerte at the time. And because I look so white, everyone was like, I would say scared of me because, you know, am I going to bust them? Is this an ice yeah. raid? I look very different from everyone there. And they gave me pamphlets to read. And I really got into the Santa Muerte community because I wanted to figure out the puzzle. Why are these people who are so beat down in life. They have no avenues for justice, no avenues for self-determination. And in this hopelessness and despair, 
out of every deity, every being, every religion in the world, they look to the Grim Reaper and death as their salvation to keep on living and mm. find hope in the future. I was, I was, I found that fascinating. Yeah. And I couldn't understand why until I delved into it, got into it. And that really set me on a magical path. Once I got, um, once I partnered up with La Santa Muerte as my like, my homegirl, my main, my main, <laughs> my main spiritual friend, um, just think doors started opening, things started magically happening. And I've been a follower ever since. I even have this, uh, this little Santa Muerte bracelet. Oh, wow. I know. I gave a I gave a tour. Um, you know, my my pompous moment. I gave a tour to uh the New York Museum when they were visiting Los Angeles. They says we want to go into the streets and visit an authentic Santa Muerte temple. And you wrote the successful book on it. You seem white enough to talk to us. It was it yeah. was a whole yeah, it was a whole thing. It was a whole wow. thing. But yeah, I took them and they loved it. They fell in love with it. And the temple gave us all these free little bracelets that I still wear imbued cool. with the magical power and protection. And I don't leave my house without it. <laughs> very important. But that's a long winded story of my adventure. <laughs> it's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Um, I, yeah, it kind of, um, I've always liked the, the death in Terry Pratchett's Discworld. Um, and uh, so I can totally see how death can become a deity. That makes total sense to me. Oh, yes. So, oh, yeah. yes. Oh, that's and, good. And fun fact, um, after, you know, after I started really get into the devotion of La Santa Muerte, um, I, I, need, I suddenly needed a job, as happens to us in life. And I wasn't getting hired anywhere. So I thought, okay, Santa Muerte, I need a job. I need to pay these bills. These student loans are not going away. The next week, the next week, I get hired at a mortuary, and I was like, "Ah, oh, that makes sense." Of course, I get, of course I asked Santa Muerte for help, and I get hired there. This practically a temple of La Santa Muerte, so it makes sense. I mean, and that that's a whole story on its own, but <laughs> um, yeah, and that that actually working physically with death and grieving and handling the physical corpses and seeing what death looks like because it's so hidden from us we pay strangers mm. a bunch of money to take our dead relative away store in a freezer somewhere next to god knows who and then come back looking sleeping so but seeing death really made my devotion to it more profound and helped inspire the book morbid magic um as my lighting gets ominously darker while the california sun sets <laughs> as yes. i say that yeah that uh, new book sounds fascinating so um definitely going to check that one out as well it's interesting because i think the you know it's interesting you emphasize the powerlessness of uh, that community and the oppression because that's the classic genesis of witchcraft right that it is it you're, is you're the oppressed so you turn to magic to resolve your the well to kick back at the oppressors basically it's true. I mean, especially with the Santa Muerte community, you know, where it originated in Mexico and you have a super, you know, very patriarchal, you know, masculinity rules. Catholicism is part and parcel of Mexican culture yeah. to where if you're like anything that the Catholic Church or conservative society, society says you aren't, you can't pray to God for help because God is, you know, white, masculine, oppressive, as you've always been taught. So you have to find all these alternative things you know other deities other forms of magic to find your power because god's off limits to you yeah so it's yeah it's the same the world around yeah that's very true isn't it like the whole you know images of christ pantocrator sitting on his you know high up in the cathedral it's like you no know, only the only the really high up people can pray to him so you've got to pray to the lo local saint or whatever mm-hmm mm -hmm. I love how these folk saints just kind of appear out of, I don't know, the, the pagan underlying energy and just go, hey, I'm here. Like, same with the uh, Virgen de Guadalupe, I reckon. Oh, yeah, the whole the whole Mother Earth goddess being transformed by the Catholic Church to be more convincing rather than say, no, 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 you're th this this Earth goddess you're praying to. 
is not real, people don't like that. But if you say, oh, no, no, we call her this name. Well, they're actually the same person. Then it's like, hmm, that makes more sense. And so it, it's, it's horrible, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a good conversion tool. The oh, yeah. Fake, false friendliness and, yep. you know, the, the predator that smiles and is seductive. Yes, I mean, uh, it's probably preferable to stamping it all out altogether, but um, it's it's a tricky situation to be sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so um, if you wouldn't mind sharing a bit about your position on the, the queer landscape. Oh, Lord, get ready. Get ready to read the comment section right now. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone get to type it. No. Um, it was. It actually fundamentally changed after I started, I wrote the book Queer Magic, um, LGBT plus spirituality and culture from around the world. Because in the research of it, I was exposed to a lot more. And before, I was always very. Um, I was never in the closet. I was never. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I went. In good examples. I went to Catholic school all my life until college, and in my Catholic all boys high school, we were taught by monks and brothers of the Salesian order, and we had. A, flamingly openly gay monks teach us awesome. so yeah i mean it's, it's a very california catholic education <laughs> um, so yeah i was never taught that it was bad my parents are very accepting they would they were i believe they wish i would rather not be not for some moral reason but just because it makes life harder for their son and they're aware that it's going to be a rougher road yeah but yeah i've never had any problems with being queer and so the biggest thing I wanted because when you're young you want to establish an identity for yourself you want to find a community to belong and you know by having this label and fighting for labels I'm this this is my specific niche within the you know umbrella of queerness and being so adamant I am this I am not this and these are my minute details within that subcategory and it's good people find a lot of solace and community in that especially when you had no community your whole life it's good to belong but after writing the book i am against labels of all sort like i know people find power in being this sub 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 category of the queer spectrum and if that helps you god all power to you i'm, I'm not knocking it but there's a power in having no labels there's a magical ineffableness in not having labels because if, if i'm saying i am this then by identifying as this, everything in this box, I know who I am and where I fit in this box. But I'm also saying I don't belong anywhere that is outside of this box. Yeah. And I already don't like not belonging to different places, you know, it, no one likes that. So a lot of people find comfort in the solidarity of the box. I don't like the box. I don't care what you call me. I'm not big on labels. You can, you can call me whatever you want and it doesn't make a difference. But by having doing that, I felt so much more free. I don't feel very limited. I feel not that I belong everywhere, but that just life is unlimited. Yeah. And even and even in, in the book, I go into detail about how the there's these shamans up in Siberia of the Chuchki tribe. And, you know, there's queer shamans, there's, you know, straight shamans, there's cis shamans, trans shamans, there's everything. But the shamans who don't have any label they're the most feared because they have powers of femininity, masculinity, all the shades in between and all the unknowns that we don't even have words for. Yeah. And so they can access that extra power. So I'm very against everyone subcategorizing themselves and trying to find a label. It's safe. Hmm. I get it. It's comforting. But don't be afraid to sacrifice the good and the safe for something great and wonderful. Very true. That's my well, take I, on it. I I really struggle with the whole label thing because, um, you know, I'm bisexual, but I, by, when I say I'm bisexual, I mean what it meant in 1990. Right. Right. right? It, it keeps was, changing. And it's changed because the pansexuals came along and changed it. And I'm like, excuse me, you just changed my label under me. What are you doing? Um, and it's not my only thing, right? It's not my, so I, I like the, the catch all queer because like then it encompasses everything like you say and also the gender identity thing I'm like 
well, I'm not really sure. I've read the definition of Mm non-binary and gender fluid and gender queer, and I can't figure out which one of those I am. So in the end, I think non-binary is the most descriptive of what I am. So I'm just like, okay, I'll go with that. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I totally know what you mean, because the more you try to fit into somebody else's definition of a thing, I'm like, well, I don't know. (laughs) And what about all these other things that I do, you know? Exactly. And the human psyche and soul is so beyond complex and nuanced as to even even the most nuanced label. It's it's I always feel like it's so I have to sacrifice a little minute part of myself in order to fit into a certain label because no Mm. label 100 percent describes everyone. So. I'd rather not. But I respect those who do and whatever helps you get through this thing called life. I support it. <laughs> Absolutely. As long as you're not well, hurting other people. It's also why I chose the term queer landscape rather than the spectrum, because I don't like the idea of it being a linear thing from one pole to another pole. Um, so it's like it's a landscape no, that's true. with that's lots true. of different scenery. <laughs> that's true. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I like it too. Um, so here's a big one for you. Do you, um, in fact, you probably do, you, you're probably going to have a really good answer to this one, which is, um, do you have a definition of queer magic? Seeing as you wrote the book, a book called Queer Magic. I wrote the book on it. Uh, yeah. Um, um, no, I, <laughs> I mean, the closest I can get to try and define that would be any magic that is out of the the norm of society for sexual and gender identity because a lot of you know a lot of a lot of the magic when you grow up any form of queer um you know there's spells and a lot of spells have specific ingredients that align and have certain symbologies with this and that but it's always trying to have to adapt and find a queer version of it like oh do i need to substitute this flower ingredient in a love potion with hyacinth because I'm looking for male, male love. And so we're used to changing straight magic to fit us. So I would say queer magic is anything that you don't have to change to it for it to be acceptable to the way you live life in your sexual gender identities and how you see yourself in the world. That's my definition. I like it. That's good. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) we've so far, we've had uh, like people's definitions. We've had um, it's liminality. magic yeah. and magic and queerness are a total overlap <laughs> we've had everything from uh you know like the liminal nature of it um the fact that we're coming at things at a tangent and from a different perspective um but also the idea that um the magic uh, you, you know magic turns you queer basically because magic is inherently queer um, I can see that. I can <laughs> so see it that. means as queer people we're better at it we're better at a lot of things. First we are of all. pretty damn <laughs> awesome. It's true. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. So that flows into the next question, which is how accommodating or inclusive or affirming is your tradition of your queer identity? And again, I don't really like the term identity, but identity. <laughs> I would say it's super um, conforming. I mean, realistically, I'm. I don't have one thing I follow. Again, it's it's that not trying to, not trying to not fit in boxes for some iconoclastic, you know, rebellious way, but just again, what works. And so there's magical, there's magic and meditations and ways of seeing and perceiving and interacting with the world from various religions and magical traditions that I follow, because they work. I mean, that that's my definition of am I going to utilize it in my life? So some people call that cherry picking. But I call that it works and I'm happy with it. <laughs> but if I have to specifically go to one thing for a better answer, it would be um, probably, the, of course, the Santa Muerte tradition. And it's super, super accepting. I mean, most temples I know of are the good ones because there, there's some shady people out there if you've read the book. But the really solid Santa Muerte temples are usually run by um, trans men, trans women. The queer community is very much a part of La Santa Muerte because, again, if you're growing up in very conservative, very conservative Catholic Mexican Latino society, 
it is not okay to be queer, especially right. a queer man. Um, you know, your masculinity, your machismo is everything, but not everyone lives like that. So they seek the refuge of death, not as in dying, yeah. but you know, <laughs> the grim reaper, the grim reapress. And because death doesn't judge. I mean, death takes everyone, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're a good person, whether you're a bad person. Death doesn't see your gender. Death comes for us all. Yeah. And so knowing that there's this deity, because every deity has some sort of agenda or some sort of preferences, even if it's not malicious, they do. Yeah. But death, death is the only thing that has no preferences and sees you for who you are and nothing else. And so a lot of and people in the queer Latino community find such comfort in that, knowing they're going to be working with a deity who not only won't judge them, but won't judge anything they do, any of their decisions. So it's very accepting. If you're oh, that's queer, beautiful. Yeah, you're queer and you're looking for um, acceptance, um, look into the Santa Muerte community for sure, for sure. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Uh, and awesome, obviously. Um, so you clearly have uh, a lot of a range of spiritual practices that you do. Um, I do. I do. So, you want to tell us anything about those? Um, yeah, I think the closest thing, aside from you know the Santa Morte tradition, it's very much Taoism. In that, it, there's the maxim of you know, the way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. Because if you have a very specific outlook of what you want your life to be and how it's going to come about and you've marked the road on your map of life, um, every time there's a bend in the road or there's an unseen overgrowth or something happens, it throws you off kilter and you get angry and you try to force life to make it happen. And that's where I kind of use magic as a last resort. Um, my thing is, if I need to manipulate the natural forces of the universe to make something happen for me that is not naturally happening, why is that? Mm. And I try to check myself and I'm like, do I need this? It's most often it's my advice when people think, you know, I need some love spells. Give me a Santa Muerte love spell. And I'm like, look, if you have to, again, rearrange the natural order of the universe to get someone to love you, you can, there are better options out there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> So, but that's how I see life. I'm very much, I very much go with the flow and I've been so wonderfully surprised by not, I have a direction. Like I know I'm heading west or I'm heading north, but how I get there, it's an adventure along the way. And I'm not mad if something sidetracks me or something happens. I mean, the best example of this is writing for Llewellyn. Um, I had no intention to write for Llewellyn. I had no intention of writing this in my entire life. Um, and I remember when I first started reading the magical books in college that we talked about earlier, and I was like, man, people make a living off of this. That's crazy. Never thought of it. But I always wanted to be a writer, and I've written fiction books, and I remember I pitched a fiction book to Llewellyn because I still wasn't fully aware of who or what Llewellyn was. And I was like, eh, the worst I can get is a rejection letter, which I did get immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but the rejection letter came back and it says something along the lines of we don't do fiction books but you're you have a character about la santa muerte and we've been looking for someone you know someone latino to write a book on la santa muerte who's in the devotional cult can you do it and i could have said no i could have been no i'm a fiction writer i'm going to shop this manuscript elsewhere i'm not going to be just distracted by all this but I accepted it and I was like, sure, you know, and then it led to all this growth and, you know, writing all these other books and learning and my fiction work has gotten better because of it. And it's that whole Taoist idea of not being attached to things, not mm. in the Buddhist sense of, you know, just detachment from the world, but enjoy the world. Just yeah, don't it's not grasp. being attached to the outcome kind of thing. Yeah, not being attached to the outcome and just because if you need to let go of things or you'll be dragged. Mm. And it will take you in certain places and trying to force the world. So I, ra I rarely use magic um, unless I absolutely have to or need to. I more get into a meditation and have spiritual counsels. Um, again, talk to me by B. Dave Walters. 
and that's it. And if I, and if I can't, if I need to use magic to do something, I'm very hesitant to do it because I think I don't need to, Yeah. or there's a better way to do it. Or again, you know, unanswered prayers are sometimes the best answered prayers. So like, Oh yeah. Should I not be having this for a certain reason? And I'm trying to force it to happen. Like, no, no, I know I'm going to light this fire. And I know there's a warning sign saying not to touch it, but let me do, let me try to touch it. Like, no, there's something. Well, I I would classify the meditation under the broad heading of magic personally, but I think um, the, uh, I totally agree about, you know, not trying to force things because I was once trying to head down a path that would have been a disaster for me. Mm-hmm. And the universe was just going bang, door in my face, bang, another door in my face. And there were about five or six of these doors being slammed in my face. And I'm like, hey, I think the universe is trying to tell me not to go down that path. It's like, ah. <laughs> and as soon as I yeah. changed yeah. back to the path I should have been on, all the doors opened and my life just got better. And I'm like, there you go then. It's, it's very yes. true. I know, <laughs> living here in Los Angeles, um, the biggest thing you see is you see all the, you see all the people living in the Hollywood Hills and um, not everyone, but a lot of people are very, who shouldn't be unhappy are very unhappy in life. Mm. And it's, they've climbed the ladder of success only to realize that it was leaning up against the wrong wall because they were so determined to make it in this one industry and do this one thing that they got what they wanted, but it's not what they wanted. Yeah, now they're stuck there. So I, I, I'm, if I have to push or force, there's something, there's something happening. Let me re, let me check myself. But that's as non magical as that is. That's that's my style. Yeah, super magical. I mean, I I'm a Taoist at heart, so I totally get. That. You know, you know. If I have to explain the Tao, it is not the Tao. Yes, so. <laughs> yes. The um, uh oh trying to think of the quote from the Dao Jing, um, that which can be named is not the true Tao. Exactly, which again leads me to the summary of it all. I, I can't keep on trying to ask questions and find certain specific things because it's beyond human comprehension anyway. Just in, let the mystery be and enjoy it. Yeah. Um, float down that stream. That's awesome. Love it. Um, Okay. Do you have a favorite book on queer magic, uh, the topic of queer magic? Yes. It's called Queer Magic by Tomas (laughs) Prado. You're not (laughs) allowed to pick your own one. (laughs) I I will say, I will say, all joking aside, I'm very proud of that book. You should would. I would say say that, but a non-pompous answer would be I would I would have to say for nostalgia's sake I would say gay witch okay there's two I would say gay witchcraft by Christopher Penzak because that is not only is that one of the first magical books I read because my my sensei was like hey you want to learn magic you're gay why don't you read this book I think it'll be a good intro and it was but it really it really set the standard of how it, again, taking what exists and looking at it through a queer lens, like you see these deities and you're like, hmm, maybe this myth means this, or maybe this plant and this way of going about things also means this. So it, it had a lot of question everything vibe to it. That's good. And it, since it was my first exposure, it's probably what influenced me the most subconsciously. But aside from that, I would say outside the charm circle by misha magdalene because um as involved in the queer community as i was or am i don't you know there's so much nuances of how it's evolving and all these labels people want especially because i'm so anti-label um but that book really helped me understand what is this label? Why the people who are in it want to be identified that way? How and it, it really explained everything really well. Yes, both in a clear. practical, yeah, both in a practical way, but also in how that relates to the mystical spiritualityness of being this label. So I would say that I would say that as a very, as a very good one. But gay witchcraft was my was my starter. So that that was big. Yeah, 
that's a good one. It's, it's on my list. Um, I have to rec I have to recommend another book called Queer mm -hmm. Magic to you if, if you haven't come across it, which is uh, Queer Magic: Power Beyond Boundaries, uh, which was an anthology. I think they almost came out almost exactly the same time. Yes, yes, I remember the marketing team at Llewellyn like contacted me. Hey, we have a book. There's a book coming out with the same title around the same time of the year because everyone wants their queer books out during Pride season. You know, oh yeah. June. <laughs> So I was just like, that's fine. That's fine. But um, I actually have not read it. I think I know some of the people who added to the anthology. Yeah, I'm but, in it. Um, oh, see, now I, ha now I have to read it. Now I have to read it. But but yeah, I remember, I remember when that came out. I remember when that came out. Yeah, because, well, we were sitting there going, um, because Lee and uh, Ty, who... Ty, uh, Ty Phoenix, Lee Harrington and Ty Phoenix Culliston, who um, edited it, were probably sitting there doing the same thing. <laughs> so. It's a good title, and it just hit the zeitgeist that all these people suddenly wanted to use it. Yeah, so it I works. mean, that's the thing. Everyone it's like I, I really thought about, you know, should I call my, because um, my channel is just my name, and I was going to use The Witch's Mirror, but that's become a playlist now. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to have... Well, you know, shall I have queer magic as the title? Because it's it's been used twice already. It's yeah, it's <laughs> hey, let's just go for it. It'll be a good title. So it's yeah, it's not copyrighted. Go ahead and use it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like if somebody nicks your subtitle, that's another matter altogether. Yeah, if it was and if it was by Tomas Prower on the YouTube screen, I'd be like it would be weird. Or Llewellyn. Llewellyn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I think um, I have, I must confess, I have not yet got around to reading your book, but I want oh, no, to, and uh, um, I think, you know, it should be really interesting because uh, there's another book that came out, must be 20 years ago now, maybe 30 years ago, <laughs> um, which is also about queer magic around the world um or but it's kind of queer deities and it's more it's more a kind of dictionary of queer deities and is it the castle encyclopedia yep. of queer? yeah that's it yeah i have that book that was one of the that was one of the thank god i have that books um during the queer magic research for the for my book so yeah it's good it's good it is it's great I also, um, you know, the little, the picture on the back with the um, the painting on, the small painting on the back. I actually had that as so, the yeah. cover of my book. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I know, I know, I know that, I know that painting for sure. Yeah, I just love the painting so much. It's great. And uh, yeah, the art is real sweetie as well. So it's really good. Oh, I see. That's good. So, uh Obviously, you have a website because I just went and checked it out. Uh, oh. It's very, very, very good, very professional. Um, Best Squarespace does. <laughs> uh, and do you have a blog or YouTube or any of those things? Not yet. Everyone keeps saying I need to make some sort of a YouTube thing, which I, I might, I might start doing. But as of right now, no. I mean, my books and my blogs. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then in different websites and people ask me to write articles or contribute little things. But I would say my blog is probably my social media pages. If you want to know what's up, I post there. So yeah, just follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and that, that's my blog. Cool. But but yeah, that's about, yeah, those are my books. That's it. Cool. I have escaped from Facebook. Best oh, decision Lord. ever. <laughs> I I'm gonna say this. I want to, but there are people on Face. They're like, her fans on Facebook. We're very Facebook. They don't want to be on Twitter, and it's like, I can't communicate with them anymore. You know, I'm not. I'm not just gonna leave. So, I have to. Yeah. I have to. I, I will say. You. Yeah. I, I would. I get. It, it. I, I probably get it. shot myself in the foot somewhat by leaving Facebook, but um. Oh yeah. If it, the bu business wise. Yeah. I'm staying. Um, personal wise, no. You have my phone number. You can call me. <laughs> if you yeah, don't have my phone exactly. number, don't call me. <laughs> yeah, I've got to figure yeah, out a way of reactivating my page without reactivating my account. That would be good. Oh, Lord. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Um, yes. Yeah, so tell us about your new book. 
as well. You have a new book in Yes, I can't say too much about it right now. Um, I can say that it's the next in the series of the Magic series, which is probably every book by Llewellyn. (laughs) But, uh, you know, the Queer Magic, Morbid Magic series, where I take um, a very universally known yet somewhat taboo and misunderstood topic that everyone around the world is involved in and does, whether they admit it to themselves or not. And I look at how throughout history and throughout every culture around the world, um, we've been involved in it magically, um, physically, the deities involved to it, the people who are prayed, the legends that have come from us mortals. So it's the next book like that, along the lines of the first one, Queerness, and then Afterlife Death Magic, and then this upcoming one, which shall Ooh. be a secret for now, but it's coming out June 2022. So again, follow my social media and you'll probably hear like the announcements and the fun stuff you have to do <laughs> with the. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, Sounds get ready. Woohoo. Okay, now you've got me really intrigued. It's like one of those weird riddles where I'm like, okay, what thing has everybody done? It must be food. <laughs> is it? Is it this because this this is the best state to be in because it's better than the moment, better than the memory, the anticipation of it. All possibilities exist. And it's just that yeah. that wonderful knowing until Llewellyn gives me the artwork that they've created to where I can actually promote it. So when that happens, until that happens, you're just going to be sitting there going, I see you shiver with anticipation. I will probably have some sort of Tim Curry gifts on my (laughs) social media pages along with it. But no, I mean, like for this, I mean, if you, if for anyone who's read my previous books, um, it's not just me talking. It's, um, I invite people from around the world who in different cultures were actively involved in the magic in those regions of the world, you know, queer people involved in afterlife, death rites, whatever the topic is, and have them write anecdotes, write spells. And this one's the same. And I've, I have to tell you, I've got some amazing people. I've got some Hollywood celebs that people know. I've got some politicians that people probably know. I've got people from around the world. Oh, it's... Wow. So I'll start highlighting them on my social media and give them shout outs when things start going along in that process. But it's, it's exciting. It's that exciting. sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, you know, really intrigued by the thing you mentioned about the, the shamans in um, Queer Magic too. That sounds, that sounds really interesting. Oh yeah. That was my, that was my f- favorite thing I found out for Queer Magic wise with that book for, for certain um, yeah, I mean, that one really hit me, really formulated how I see myself in the world around me. Mm. Yeah, that's really neat. It's very cool. Cool. So, yeah, and anything else you want to add? Lord, I would say... I'm trying to think of stuff. No, I mean really just open your open your mind to not you but like everyone who's really you know, everyone keep your mind open to all these different possibilities that thing you really really do want do you because at the end of the day at least from from my spiritual understanding of the world everything that you want you want it because it'll make you happy you want that car not because of the car but because you will feel happier in having the car Why do you want that nice house? Is it really, do you want security? Do you want financial safety? Why do you want financial safety? There's a reason if you dig deep into your soul and you, you know, ask your higher power, whatever it may be, what is it that you really want out of this? And do I need this specific thing or this specific experience to have that happiness? If the answer is no, then you don't really need that thing. So stop pushing for it magically. But if it's yes, and it's absolutely this, and it is only this, and you are being true and honest with yourself, then yeah, go for it. But Do be open. without doing and everything gets done. Oh, my God. I mean, yeah, it's, again, if you have to force it, yep, absolutely. don't force it. <laughs> and if the universe is slamming the door in your face, just walk the other way. Take, take it as yeah, I mean, take it as a sign. There could be a, a towering inferno behind that door that you oh, don't yeah. want to walk into. But you're like, damn, I want to see what's on the other side. Well, yeah, you do, but you once you open it, you'll be like, ah, oh, damn, I wish I hadn't seen that. Yeah. Well, I think I mean for me, it's like, am I trying to if I'm pursuing happiness, 
happiness is sort of fleeting and superficial and tied to the sort of you know ephemeral experiences whereas what i'm actually after is that thread of joy and the the sort of you know much vaunted inner peace i guess that you're you're trying to kind of have that connection to yeah. that, the thread of the 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 Tao or the 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 will of the universe or whatever it is like you're trying to connect to the you're having that connection inner connection to mm -hmm. all that is so that you're um you know and then you've always got that source of joy yeah, I mean, it's true. I mean, life, life marches on whether you want it to or not. So you have to be open to all experiences. I mean, it's, I guess, I guess to put it another way, it's, there's no final destination. Even when you climb that mountain or you reach that hill, it's like, okay, what's next? And there yeah, will be a, a what's next. Side. Yeah. I mean, like you, you I mean, you, you, you've done it too. I mean, like you, you produced that, that book and you're like, I did it. Life doesn't suddenly stop. I mean, you know, it, it keeps on turning and you have to keep moving with it. But if you're happy with the journey and I'll say this as a caveat, a lot of people, a lot of people who tell themselves, oh, yeah, I'm just happy with the journey. I don't I don't, it doesn't matter if this outcome is going to happen or not. It doesn't you know, I'm just happy. Most people are lying to themselves when they say that, because what they really mean when they say that is I don't think this is going to come out to happen. I don't think my dreams are going to really happen. So. I'm going to say this to myself enough so that I can be happy as a consolation prize that my life wasn't wasted in pursuit of this thing that I'm not going to have. Yeah, that's what people are really telling themselves when they say that you own what you say, if and truly enjoy the now, it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter if you're in this tiny apartment that you don't really like, it doesn't matter if you're in this job you don't really like, if you're not if find some way to be happy in it now you're just gonna be unhappy throughout the whole journey yeah i mean i always say like you know that thing that you really want to do that everybody else tells you you shouldn't do um you know do the thing that you want if you if you want it from the right place which is that deep soul connection thingy uh then then follow that dream you know do that thing um because even if it turns out not to be the right thing it will put you in a place yeah. where where the, where you'll find the right thing because that's it's, happened to me you know like everyone said to me oh you don't want to be a teacher you'd hate it right <laughs> so i i thought well if i don't do this thing i'm never going to know whether i like it or not so i'm going to do it so i did it yeah. and i didn't like it however it did make me realize that what i like about teaching is conveying knowledge to other people mm -hmm. um and that's and then I've found a way of doing that without actually being embroiled in the school system. So it worked. There, there's there's definitely a way. There's definitely a way. I would I would say I think I think one of the biggest things I've learned in my magical years is that that, that kind of that kind of going with the flow. That, or you, the utilization of magic is when you use magic make sure you're not make sure you're okay with where you are before you really start using magic because you get into that weird desperation magic where you think you want something so badly and again all the doors are closing the walls not moving and so you really push it with this desperation magic and then you get what isn't bad things come of it like that lover yeah. you really want or that that neighborhood that you really want but once you move into it It's yeah. So again, you have to be happy with where you are. You have to be otherwise you cannot do effective magic for a happy result if you're yeah. not calm and centered in yourself. So don't worry, be happy, which yeah. is very trite, but <laughs> but it's very it's, true. It's very it's very true for well, sure. So yeah. and also you can't help you know it's that the other massive cliche about um, you know fit your own oxygen mask before attempting to help others oh yeah oh yeah i mean even jesus said it you know you know get the gunk out of your eye before you help your neighbor's right. eye yeah i mean it's yeah it's you got to help yourself you can you cannot you I mean you again which may be controversial 
it judge things by how they work. If you if you are needing a guru who is saying all these good things, like yeah, this is the love spell to get that to get your ex back. This is the one to get that person to notice you. And you notice that that person has a very trashy romantic life. Why why are you getting advice from that person? Are you learning money spells from someone who is you know struggling to meet make ends meet? I'm just like, yeah. That's not, that's not logical. <laughs> what what works? What works? Absolutely. And if it works, use it. And be careful who you get information from. Because yeah, well, I mean, facts. the only uh, the only time I would ever do a love spell for it, for somebody was the time that we actually kind of just turned up the pilot light a little bit. Right. Oh yeah. Like okay, light a beacon on the on the astral, uh, as it were, and see who comes. Yeah. Right, because you're not. You're not going to do a love spell to get a particular person, but I think you're allowed to kind of just turn up the pilot light and go, look, shiny person over here. That's, yeah, I, I agree. That's the best way to do it. I'm very much of the camp of, I am the moral ambiguity of making someone fall in love with you against their will. I have no problem with that. I, if you want to do that, go for it. But I would say you will, it's not a happy result. I'm no. not going to stop you from doing it. I'm not going to say it's wrong. But you're not going to be happy. No. But well, that, I was in a relationship with someone who did that spell, not on me, but they'd done a spell of that kind, and it, I can honestly say that it was one of the most unhappy relationships of my life. So, yes, I mean it's like having it's been like, on the receiving end of that. You know, I'm like, no, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, people. I mean, what hubris these humans have to think that you know, here's this universe and all the deities with the masters of the universe but you know what god you know what deities i know better i know this toxic person really loves me watch <laughs> yeah no no good comes from knowing better than the universe <laughs> very true well they've got an infinite perspective and we have a finite local perspective right so we're, we're just so attached to what we want yeah but again why do you want it and is there another option or way to get it yeah and and also you know leaving leaving the options open for the universe to to find the way for you yeah i mean i i credit that way of thinking to definitely getting the llewellyn contract and beyond and again what if i said no to my friend who's just like hey, my, my shady friend of all people hey you want to go cruising at midnight around east la to see these like death cults i could have i should have said no <laughs> <laughs> but but I was open to it. I was like, yeah, you know, let me, let me see what happens because of it. You know, you chat with this person who's interested in you, but you're not too interested in them. But then you become interested in them when you really learn about them. I mean, yeah. there's there's all sorts of things. Or you meet someone along the way who then reaches out to you and becomes, I mean, there's, you don't know the whole chain of events. But so be kind to everyone you meet, not in a manipulative way, but keep your options open. Absolutely. Yeah, it reminds me of the, uh, the the Taoist farmer story. Which one? Tell us. Uh, so this Tell is us. The, there's a farmer, and he has two. He has a uh, he has a son, and he has some horses, and mm -hmm. uh, the horses run away, break out of his field, and run away into the forest, and the um, the rest of the village goes, "Oh no, that's terrible! What a disaster!" And, and he says, "Well, eh, it'll be fine. Uh, uh -huh. It is what it is." And then. Um, the army come and requisition all the horses um, but his horses have come back and then just after the army requisitioned everybody else's horses and they were going oh it's a disaster his horses come back from the forest and you go and the rest of the villagers go ah oh, lucky you it is what it is uh, mm -hmm. and then his son breaks his leg and the villagers are like oh no disaster um, but then the army come again and take all the sons to draft them into the army and so of course his son doesn't go because he's got a broken leg so the rest of the village go oh how lucky <laughs> and um rumor has it that this story is still going on i believe it i believe it i've seen similar things i've experienced similar things i i want to meet that man or his family <laughs> yeah but, it's, but yeah, that is the Taoist farmer story <laughs> That's that's my life. That's my out, spiritual outlook in a nutshell. It's like this bad thing happened. 
there's probably a good reason for it. Just keep on keeping on. And then later on, you realize in hindsight, yeah, thank God that happened. <laughs> Absolutely. Like my doors slamming in my face experience um, since I went, okay, so that door is closed. After the fourth door slammed, I was like, okay, I'm getting the hint now. Um, <laughs> so I went back to what I should have been doing. Um, and then since then, everything's just gone completely right. It's been amazing. So it's magical how that happens, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I have to admit that it took four doors slamming in my face before four or five of them going bang, bang, bang before I went, hang on a minute. <laughs> hey, that's better than, you know, eight or ten. <laughs> oh, well, this is true. Yeah. And they were all in really rapid succession. So I was like, oh, OK, I get the hint. Yeah. Oh yeah. oh yeah um and then it was the way that all the doors started opening I'm like aha opening so, for you you didn't even have to push them no i didn't it was just just mm -hmm. sitting there going okay i'm on the right path now it's like um one of my favorite ever quotes is um from Lawrence van der post and it's from a far off place and uh now let me see if i can remember it only one heart had to find its true position and travel on from there and all the rest would follow for in the depths of all life all were united and only one heart had to find its true position uh, for all the rest to follow i like that and i agree with that for sure just being that example and then everything else comes into it of its own accord yeah yeah it's lovely Oh, that's lovely. I like that. Yeah, that, 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 that's my outlook if, <laughs> for people who are curious to know. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> well, it's been an absolute pleasure. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And I think we got quite deep there. It was quite exciting. Well, good. I mean, that's those are the good conversations. I mean, Absolutely. you know, that's beyond the the cosmopolitan one of, oh, what coffee do you have? Oh, what do you, you know, no, no one wants to, hear, well, people want to hear that because they buy it apparently, but no, 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 that's, that's a good, that's the good YouTube thing. I, I love it. Yeah. And if, if anyone's listening, they want more, just follow me on social media, keep following, subscribe to this YouTube channel. So you get more like fun talks like this. I mean, follow us. Yeah, totally. Cool. Well, thank you so much again and very best wishes with your new book, which is very excited about. And because um, oh. I'm I'm totally mystified now. So yeah, I'll good, have to see if I was good. right in good. my guess. Yeah, get ready. January yeah. 2022. Hopefully the world is in a better place for it, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. yeah let's hope good so. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, thank you so much again. And um, I will now stop recording. There we go.